what makes Rocket a good character? What score would I give him 1 out of 10? On today's episode of Hero Review, I will be analyzing the character to find out just how good a protagonist he is. Comment below what hero I should review next. I made you! How did you know? Rocket's actual backstory has always been somewhat of a mystery in the Guardians trilogy, that is, until Guardians 3. In Guardians 3, we learn a lot about how and why he was created, and as I said in my review of the High Evolutionary, it's the backstory that seems the most representative of this entire trilogy. To know the backstory, we have to know the High Evolutionary, a geneticist and scientist obsessed with creating the perfect utopia, home to the perfect race. The High Evolutionary traveling and observing all corners of the universe for ideas, inspiration, and pillars upon which to build this new society. Along his travels, he would visit Earth, and among other things, he'd take several of our planet's animals to study and run tests on. The ones we focus on being Rocket, Lila, Floor, and Teefs. Running tests on the animals, the High Evolutionary would give these animals the ability to talk as well as other genetic upgrades, such as Rocket being able to walk on two feet, spider legs for Floor, better arms for Lila. I must say, Rocket kind of got screwed, like all the other ones got sick upgrades. Raising the creatures who only grew more intelligent, he almost served as a father figure for them, telling them that once he achieved his dream, they'd all move to a new planet, which would serve as this utopian paradise he'd always been working on. Only issue was that the new animals he was working on were far too violent and aggressive. In no shape or form were they good enough to inhabit this new world. What he didn't know was that Rocket had developed beyond what he could ever imagine. He had bigger ideas, he had the ability to create, and when Rocket pointed out the problem, the High Evolutionary would lose his mind, telling Rocket it shouldn't be possible for him to figure this out, to figure out what he himself couldn't. He'd tell Rocket that he and his friends would never make it to the New World, saying he was going to kill Rocket's friends and cut out his brain to study for future experiments. In trying to escape with his friends, Rocket would succeed, but his friends wouldn't be so lucky, falling victim to the High Evolutionary. The pain of finding this family only to lose it would be a driving force in Rocket's story going forward. After some time, he'd find and befriend Gru, only to later get mixed up with Quill, Gamora, and the rest of the Guardians. He'd lose Gru along the way, but find a new family in the people around him. This is why I say Rocket is the best representation of the meaning of this trilogy. It's about misfits finding family and community together, but it's not until Guardians 3 he accepts his past. He accepts what he is and starts to be himself despite all the imperfections he was told he had. He's a character who lost a lot and from there was scared to ever lose again. And I think if you rewatch this trilogy, there's a lot to Rocket that only gets better now that we have the knowledge of his backstory. What was your second choice? Scrotum hat? <laughs> Why I love Rocket as a character is the same reason I love all of the Guardians characters. They mix genuinely compelling and interesting characters with strong emotional arcs, with comedic and other lighthearted traits to make them as likable as they are well written. First things first, I want to talk about Bradley Cooper and the boy Sean Gunn. Throughout the trilogy, Bradley Cooper has been the one providing the actual voice of Rocket, and I don't think it gets talked about enough, because in the MCU, I think it's actually one of my favorite performances of this entire 20, 30 movie something saga. It's hilarious when it needs to be, but also grounded, emotional, and really hurt and sad at others. I've always had a big respect and admiration for people who do voices in movies and games, TV, all that stuff, because going into the role, they're already fighting a different battle than those we see in live action. Voice acting, performance capture, all that stuff, they have to convey the bulk of their emotion with just their voice. We can look at a live action actor and see just how sad they are without them saying a word, but that's not the case here. There are parts of Bradley Cooper's facial expressions and things like that that are woven into this character, but it's the combined effort of Bradley Cooper and the talented artists and animators who make Rocket feel as real as he does. One of the most important people in this process is Sean Gunn, who is the Rocket stand-in on set, and it proves that motion capture, performance capture, it's just another weird job Kirk likes to do when his off time. Sean Gunn was the on-set Rocket. The other actors saw him when they were filming their scenes, and I'm sure a huge part of what he did ended up having a profound impact on the final outcome of Rocket. 
Let's talk about his personality though, because it's one of my favorites in the group. In the first film, he's a little rough around the edges, a little crass, and it just seems like he has this chip on his shoulder against the world. And honestly, it makes a lot of sense when you think about his history and origin. He says it really well in the first film that he didn't ask to be made. He didn't ask to be what he became and that everyone looks at him like this freak. He's a dude who is extremely hurt, extremely lonely. And I think it all goes back to that history with the high evolutionary. Aside from that, he's hilarious and throughout really the first two films, we get to explore that hurt in ways that are both serious and funny. I say funny because Rocket has developed kind of a rough exterior and it leads to some pretty funny moments. I'll get into it a little more later, but there are so many standout scenes in this trilogy that are just hilarious. And when you mix the amazing cast with James Gunn's stellar writing and Bradley Cooper's delivery, you get some absolutely fantastic moments. He's like that one friend that we all have that cares a lot, but doesn't show it. And when he does, it's just by making fun of people. His interactions with Quill being the best example of that. He also gets some great moments in the second movie with Yondu, the latter seeing himself in Rocket. And I think it's actually one of my favorite scenes in this trilogy. Yondu exposing the fact that Rocket plays tough on the outside but deep down he's scared of getting close to people he's scared of losing again and that's what drives this tough exterior we see in the movie it's a raccoon what's a raccoon it's what you are stupid ain't no thing like me except me when it comes to Rocket's actual best scenes, there are a ton of different options to choose from. I'm not going to touch on the comedic ones too much because one, there are way too many of them, and two, it's almost every other moment aside from the ones I'm going to mention. So point is, if you want some good comedic moments, the Guardians franchise will give you plenty, and Rocket is a huge reason behind that. The first real time we get to see a little closer into Rocket in this trilogy is when he gets into that fight with Drax on Nowhere. It's a great first moment in the franchise to learn more about Rocket and his past without giving too much away. One thing I like about this trilogy is how they handle revealing info about Rocket's past. We get breadcrumbs here and there throughout the first two movies, not enough to give it away, but enough to let us start thinking about it on a deeper level where we want to know more. It's almost like this hidden mystery element threaded throughout the trilogy that finally pays off in Guardians 3, and it's damn satisfying. In Guardians 2, that scene with Yondu is great, but I already touched on that. Guardians 3 is kind of a weird thing because the Rocket we've been spending time with and getting to know, he's actually not in the movie that much in the sense most of his scenes are flashbacks. All the stuff in the past is great, obviously, but I also really like those ending scenes we get with Rocket when he recovers. That final little tussle with the High Evolutionary because it's definitely not a fight. It's great to hear him finally say he's Rocket Raccoon, but I think it's more than just, oh, he's finally saying the name from the comics. It's important to remember that scene of him directly before where he sees those caged up raccoons. A moment that's important because he's seeing what he is at his core, not some genetically altered creature. He's just like these animals he ends up saving. It's a moment where he finally accepts what he is and owns it. And like I said, it makes him saying the name a lot more impactful. He's owning what he is, the thing he always denied. And it's this idea of owning who you are and all your faults is what makes this trilogy great. All of the Guardians are messed up, they're flawed and imperfect. But that does not mean they don't have value like the High Evolutionary might suggest. It's those flaws and imperfections that make them unique and relatable characters. Marvel doesn't always have relatable characters, and it's funny how James Gunn made me see more of myself in a raccoon than some of the other Marvel human characters. I didn't have to be torn apart and put back together over and over and turned into some... Some little monster. Rocket is a great character who pulls away as one of, if not the standout in this trilogy. Masterfully created by Bradley Cooper, Sean Gunn, all of the visual artists, along with James Gunn's writing. Rocket is one of the most fun yet complicated characters in the MCU. The writing is just top notch and he's one of the best characters Marvel's ever put to the screen. I only wish every character could be written with such thoughtfulness and care. I'm gonna give Rocket Raccoon a nine. Name's Rocket. Rocket Raccoon.